Hi, Paula. Good to see you. Hi, Chris. Um, yeah, good to see you. Thank you. Um, I think restaurants is really what I want to talk about in the customer journey because actually there's some terrible stats coming out at the moment. Uh, there's a report which came out yesterday that talked about restaurants globally have lost about £120 billion worth of sales in the last three months. And Yelp um, are talking about 50% of restaurants closing. So actually how restaurants re-engage, I think, in the marketplace is going to be a key area, isn't it? So I know the customer journey is something very passionate to you. Absolutely, Sorry. yeah. Um, how do you, how, what, do you, how, what are your thoughts, firstly, on how restaurants are going to have to re-engage or to think about as we, as we re-emerge? Yeah. Um, so I think, I think, I suppose the positive thing is that I think that there is absolutely going to be a desire for experience. So I think um, that hasn't gone anywhere. I think that almost um, people not having been a, allowed to sort of engage with their brands in the sort of physical sense of going out and having that experience, I think is something that will have created a lot more desire for it. So I think, you know, starting off with that as a positive, I suppose how then restaurants look to um, create their customer experience in the first instance, I think will be quite important. Um, I suppose initially, I suppose there is going to be sort of like a phasing in relation to lockdown and how um, that will impact in terms of how the customer will want to um, experience the brand. Uh, I think the first um, element will be around the um, brands being able to look at how they um, potentially use some of the innovation that they've created during lockdown to support their um, their model as they reopen. So um, there's talk about obviously the physical distancing and although there's, there's not clarity yet on exactly how that will be, whether that will be um, the one meter that people are wanting, but that will obviously create um, a, a sort of smaller uh, footprint in relation to covers. So I think having um, brands having created different ways for customers to be able to experience them during um, lockdown, I think will be something that continues. I don't think it will become a permanent replacement for the actual experience of going out, but I think it will absolutely support in terms of being able to provide um, different ways really and let the customers choose how they want to experience the, um, the sort of um, the, the brand, if you like, with the, with the customer. Um, I think technology, um, technology has been really interesting to see how that's played out over the past um, three months. And I think that it's been really um, great to see technology being embraced so well by quite a lot of brands um, and also being turned around really, really quickly. So the, the click and collect, the delivery model, and I think that will also play a part in the reopening of the um, restaurants um, because they will have some reliance on technology to help them um, recreate, um, to help them sort of bridge the, the, the contact element. So as they map their customer experience, being able to sort of meaningfully integrate technology in a way that then allows the um, consumers still to be able to order maybe from the table or the sort of um, being able to uh, the, the contactless paying obviously which has been very very key so I think all the technology will play a part in how they can recreate it. Um, outdoors being talked about a lot so it was really um, positive to read I think I read this morning about Westminster Council looking at their reopening strategy and yep. um, and creating um, some elements of more outdoor space so that they can use outdoor tables. I think that will play a part in the experience. I think that's and one of the interesting debates, isn't it, about our fresco? Because actually, it's, it's still how you get people into London or into a major city yeah. Yeah. safely, and whether or not there'll be more pedestrian sites or pedestrian areas as a result. Yeah. I, th I hope so. I think it's a really great um, opportunity to to be able to allow the sector to have a really strong summer, you know, so by creating a much more opportunity for them to use these outdoor communal spaces in a, in a way that I think can be really creative. Um, I think one of the other elements of the experience will be simplicity. And I think trying to make 
the um, experience, really honour your brand, but really think about it really in a, uh, how, how you can, I suppose, do less better. So not really big, complex menus, very simple menus that are very easy for the customer to navigate. But actually what you're getting is maybe five dishes that absolutely, you know, beautifully executed and they're the best of what you do. So I think taking away maybe some complexity that, you know, potentially brands end up building complexity in, not, not by design, just by the sheer, um, you know, it happens over time. And, and this is an opportunity, I think, to really look at your um, experience and see, well, what is it? You know, what is, why do people come to us? What is it that they really want from us? And, you know, being able to just execute those dishes, you know, absolutely on point, I think will um, set some places apart, um, definitely. Um, I think are the you, safety element is interesting. Um, sorry, uh, sorry. Sorry, I was going to say, are you, how do you feel at the moment, positive or pessimistic about the recovery piece? I, I feel really positive because I do, I do believe that um, there will be um, a demand for people to want to re-engage. I do think that, you know, by the sheer nature of we're social animals, we want to go out and socialise. And I think that will, there will be a, a desire for it. I think it's going to be challenging. I don't, you know, it, it is obviously going to take time and it's going to be challenging, but I also feel that as a sector, we're very, it's very um, adaptable. They're very, you know, we've seen some great innovation and creativity already. Um, I've listened to quite a lot of um, leaders across the sector talk, and there is a real positive narrative coming out from those, you know, very strong brands that are saying, um, you know, that they do feel that there will be a way to um, rebuild and, and restart. Um, you know, albeit, you know, I'm not trying to um, take away from the fact that obviously, it, it, you know, economically, it's very, very challenging. People are going to be starting from a very difficult place in terms of the additional, I suppose, debt that they've taken on. Um, and I suppose furlough as well um, has been brilliant, but I do think it has masked potentially, you know, the real... Um, the, the sort of longing, the, the, what actually will be happening to the sector. So I think that, you know, we haven't really seen the, the real impact yet. Um, well, I think we're starting to see that this week, aren't we? Yeah, the, redund yeah. the redundancies are, have taken a whole notch up. But it's actually the challenge is actually how you re-engage people on furlough as well, isn't it? Because the longer it's been 14 weeks now, and to get yeah. them back, back engaged and retrained is going to be quite a task as well, isn't it? Yeah, no, definitely. But I, I think that, um, I think the businesses that have managed to keep in you know contact with their teams and I suppose keep that engagement even though that they're on on furlough will I think obviously have a, a, a much easier time of being able to get those cogs turning again and get people back in and re-engaged in terms of into the um, into the workspaces but yeah that that is going to be one of the key I think challenges is how people are brought back because it's you know it's a long time for people to have been away from um, from work. And so I think how businesses manage to communicate that positively and to really engage with their people um, in a way that they really can buy into, I think will be you know, critical in terms of their reopening strategy. No, and you obviously had a lot of experience, particularly at Vista Village, overseeing all the brands and overseeing the F&B. Um, yeah. do, you, do you think as we come out, there's going to be more trust in the brands that people recognise, or do you think there'll be a move towards independence as well? Um, I think I think both, really. I, I, it's been interesting to see, because local, I think, has, the volume has turned up massively. I think a lot of the sort of small local businesses have have really um, supported throughout the, the sort of lockdown. So they've been an alternative, if you like, to some of the um, supermarkets. So they've been able to pivot their model in a way that has provided a service throughout. And I think people will remember that. And I think there will be a loyalty and, and wanting to support that sort of local agenda, which, you know, is great. I think that brands that are already have that trust, I think, you know, I think they've, some have done a really great job of engaging, you know, throughout. And, you know, those are the ones that have, have, have got a strong culture of uh, with people at the heart of it. 
um, and they have communicated in a very transparent, open, authentic way. And I think people have appreciated that and they therefore will continue to trust them and to support them really. Um, you know, I think people want the industry to come back and bounce back. So I do think there'll be a lot of support for, you know, going out and wanting to support your, those businesses as well. And have you found, because I know you've been based up in Yorkshire during this lockdown, have you found a real community spirit emerge, which has surprised you or has it, has it been as you expected? Yeah, I, I, I think this whole, um, the whole sort of crisis has really shone a very positive light on both, um, you know, on the UK as a whole. I think there has definitely been a real sense of being in it together and a sense of community and a sense of people being really want, interested in what's happening in the wider society. And I think that's just, you know, super positive. And, you know, if there would be one... Um, thing that could be a, a legacy of this I think you know actually that being something that remains really the sort of community connection um, the sense that actually you know you're not successful as a business if society is failing actually we all play a part in making sure that there's a, a wider su a success story um, and you know and there are businesses that are already doing that absolutely but I think there's there's, there will be a demand from customers, I think, to see more of that. That, that will be an important part, which I think is really, you know, it, it is a really positive outcome of something, obviously, that has been quite challenging and difficult for, you know, lots and lots of people. No, I agree. And for you, how have you found lockdown? How has it impacted on you personally? Um, I think, so there's been, the positives for me have been that I have had time with family. So I... Um, being all together. So I've got um, a 21 year old and a 17 year old bo boys who, you know, we wouldn't normally spend that much time together. And, and it has been really nice and coming together, I suppose, food over like meals. And so that has been a, a real gift for me. Um, maybe not so for them, but for me, it has. <laughs> and then, um, I think I've had um, time to I'm sort of like keeping healthy that has been something that I've probably done more exercise than I've done for a long time because you know I think even when we were allowed the one hour you used it so you know making sure physically I was healthy but also keeping your um you sort of mentally healthy so look keeping active um so that's been quite um nice to have time to be able to really just engage there's been so much um, like I say, there's been lots of things from a sector perspective, um, webinars, you know, people giving their time. So being able to listen to lots of different um, perspectives and views has been really interesting. And I learn a lot from that, um, as well as obviously connecting with, you know, the podcasts and TED Talks. So it has been good from a, a learning perspective. Um, and then professionally, I was... I'm, I used the time to um, really sort of develop my branding and the website for my new um, consultancy business. So I feel that I've been quite busy and tried to keep myself busy throughout. Um, but, you know, it's not, I, I feel it's been a real roller coaster. I mean, most people I speak to say it's, 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 you know, they have days where they're really optimistic and it's great and the sun's been shining. And so that's really helped, I think, all of us. But there are days where, you know a fallout with myself really so you know it's not <laughs> oh, I, can I can understand that and you yeah. going back to your career you founded your career originally with tailors of harrogate and betty's the famous betty's. yeah obviously... interestingly sorry sorry after you no please no, after you. interestingly my children are work are part-time so they're furloughed from betty's they're both work part-time oh. so still in the family <laughs> so yeah they both um and they've been really really well looked after so you know not that you wouldn't expect a business with such a strong sense of people and people culture so so yeah my my um my the majority of my career has been was with betty's and taylor's Paragate. so and i feel really lucky to have been um i suppose to have grown up and to have been part of a business that was really progressive um in relation to the people agenda and you know the value that it put in um all stakeholders really so you know i felt 
part of something that was, you know, it was purpose beyond profit. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't all about making, it wasn't just about making money. It was also about the um, positive impact that you, you made, I suppose, within um, society and, and every stakeholder, the customers, the suppliers. Um, so yes, very, um, yeah, a, a, a very good, uh, a very a good experience and a brilliant company that, you know, Really believed, really believed in people. Because that's the interesting thing about Betty's, isn't it? Because it has a legendary status. Everyone loves Betty's. And it almost transcends the traditional brand, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it is around, I think, you know, there's, there, there are other brands out there like Betty's, but I think brands that can actually connect emotionally with their customers. And I do think there is a, a real sense of ownership from customers as well. It's it's being part of, a, a, of something that's, a space bigger than the whole so that they they feel that they are part of the Betty's family and that's lovely and they absolutely are um, so I think there is a sense of businesses that can create that um, yeah that sort of destination status really um, but it is you know it's it's not real rocket science it is just about you know put you know treating treating people well and and really valuing the sort of learning and development of your people and really making um, and, and sort of living those values really it, it was very much values values based business and its values really were you know woven through all that it did and I think that um, you know it's interesting because in times like this culture really is what people fall back on um, in times of stress and I think those businesses like you know Betty's with a really really strong culture are the ones that will they definitely will come back and they will come back strong and they will you know they have a such a love and um, following from their um, customers that they will again really want to support them and see them thriving and you know open once more so yeah very um, very uh, uh, yeah a very great. unique Yes. Yeah, it is a very unique business. You obviously then went to Bista and oversaw the restaurants F and B at Bista Village, which must have been quite a change and quite a challenge as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it was a very a very different um, it was a very different business, and I suppose my role was very different because it was around um, a partnership with um, the different um, brands. So it isn't a typical landlord and um, sort of retailer relationship. It's much more, there's much more investment. So in some ways there was still that element of, you know, um, it was about relationship. It was about being able to build good relationships with the, um, the businesses that I partnered with. And it was just about supporting them to, um, you know, be as successful as they could be. So there was a sense of mutual benefit really so we we're sort of in it together so I did feel that sense of um, that you know within Vista albeit a very different model working with lots of different businesses rather than you know just being in in one business and sort of driving that agenda so but that was fascinating I mean I absolutely loved working with startups and you know I'm working with the likes of Pret and Itsu which are just fabulous businesses anyway that have that real um people um culture as well so it was yeah it was a, a really um and i know really in, great. and i know in a recent article you wrote you talked about the preps and how they're thinking as an example about how to re-engage people yeah no. sorry after yeah. no sorry that yeah no definitely so i think it was to do with um as part of the as part of sort of your reopening strategy i think the way that you welcome customers back because again it's been it's been a long time since customers will have physically been to your brand and experienced it so i just think it you know it just feels like there's opportunity to be able to um to do that in in a really genuine and authentic way but almost that still sort of um, recognises that you're just really pleased to be able to welcome your customers back. And Pret did the um, 20 um, coffees, organic coffees for um, 20 pounds or did like a, a sort of opening offer for, for June, which I just thought was really nice. And, you know, it, it sort of represented, it felt really natural and authentic. And, and I think Pamo's done a really brilliant job of how he's communicated and engaged throughout this 
you know, with the with customers. And, you know, again, they have a real um, sense of purpose as a business. And I think again, they they use that really as their their guide in terms of the decisions that they've made, you know, the reason that they opened and why would they be opening. And obviously they were the first to come forward with the discount for the national health um, workers and making sure the stores near there were open. So I just think that all of it felt really transparent, really honest, really, you know, genuine. And I think people relate to that. Yeah, they do. And actually this whole bit about purpose, you brought up a few times. You obviously believe that companies need to have purpose if really to, to engage. Is that fair? Yeah, def definitely. I think that, um, I think having a really strong sense of um, purpose and that's really authentic, like I say, that goes beyond just the fact that you're making, it's just to make money. I think people that have that, there's a way that they galvanize their people behind that in a very different way. Um, you know, people want to feel part of something that is, um, that has meaning. And I think that those companies that have created that, I think, do get that look sort of loyal loyalty and sort of um engagement really from their people in a way that others don't and um i do think sorry one of the things that has come out of this i think that purpose and quality are really important i think that that has again those things have dialed up more in terms of you know what you know what is the what is the um purpose of this this business what what's their reason for being um and people are wanting to engage with that at a different level than they did before. Yeah, we, we hosted a forum yesterday or this morning and um, one of the comments came out, people aren't just gonna go and tr visit somewhere where they can actually get the food they have at home. And people have obviously cooked much more at home in recent weeks. So their expectation of what they can eat out is gonna be that much greater, isn't it? That's why I liked your five dishes um, yeah. uh, benchmark earlier, because actually people do want something that's gonna be of a high quality, I think. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think it is interesting, isn't it? Because people have, I, but I also think the flip side of that, Chris, is that I think people have appreciated that it's, you know, cooking every day, you know, the, the whole bit of someone else doing it for you is actually quite nice. Yeah. So yeah, and maybe there's more value in that in terms of, you know, before, uh, less. Well, it's, you know, you're, you're right, because that's the challenge. We talked about hotels earlier. And actually people are saying, well, people don't want to go and stay at a hotel when there's any, any doubt over health and hygiene, which I understand completely. Yeah, but actually, yeah. I, I really would quite welcome a couple of days away. It'd be rather <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with that too, definitely. Definitely. It would be nice to go away. And I, and I think that people will, they, yeah, they will sort of start to build that, the, the trust will start to build back up and they, there will be that confidence to go out. I think people are ready to to go and experience things and you know quite a lot of the stuff that we're talking about is, is things that you know with they're sort of professional operators and things like the you know the health and safety and the safety of your guests that's that's almost something that's gone on in the background forever and you know it's just what you do and we're experts at it in terms of as an industry so i think that you know customers do know that that you know right. It's obviously heightened and I'm not, like I say, trying to, um, you know, play down that, you know, for, for some people this is, they, you know, this um, has been a really very difficult experience and those that have had people that have been affected by COVID-19, they will, there will be a deaf, you know, a very sort of heightened sense of, of all of those things. But ultimately, that is what, that, you know, that's almost the given, you know, the, you know, before you even, you wouldn't even question that those things would be. No, I know. No, I mean, and it's also interesting. I think people are either going to be very nervous coming out or actually seem to be the behaviours are changing. Because yeah. some of the people going back retail shopping are certainly breaching social distancing left, right and centre. And actually just quite happy to go back and queue to get back into some of the, some of the shops. Yeah. There's a whole thing, I think, called revenge shopping. Have you heard about this? Revenge. It's called revenge shopping. So oh, it's right. reven revenge on the virus. Go out and shop. Yeah, as much yeah, as yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think it is. I mean, I mean, to be honest, it's social distancing or physical distancing is a really interesting um, subject because even you know the supermarkets, you know, they're great and they have they've responded really, really um, positively and they've put in place lots of things, uh, lots of um, measures to make sure that all those things are adhered to. But actually, it's really difficult once you're inside the space to, to do it 
you know, a hundred and a hundred percent. So, you know, it's, um, yeah, there is, there oh, is a challenge. Uh, final one. Let's just talk, because I know one of your passions is talent and young people. And yeah. we're nurturing of young people. And actually, young people are the ones who, who are particularly in the firing line at this moment in time. Do you think we need to do more to engage them and reassure them? Yeah, absolutely. I think it is around um, that positive narrative, isn't it? And I suppose that, that, that does come again from the sort of leaders, the leadership. So being able to create more positive narrative around the future and the fact that, you know, we will be starting to rebuild and there is a place definitely and there's there's a you know more than just a place there's a there's a need for that young talent to be coming through um i think is really important to um to, to, to yeah to get that message out to sort of reassure um yeah and to make sure that there is you know that that sort of support there for those people that are sort of facing um, difficulty um, at this time, you know, especially I think the young, the younger generation that they are given some sort of help in terms of, you know, and guidance in, in relation to what's next then, you know, for them really, and how businesses support, you know, with their um, sort of retraining or development and learning, I think is really, really, will be really key. Um, yeah, we definitely need the young talent to come through and we need more young people coming into the um, sector. Um, so I think anything that the leaders can do to play a part in making that happen, I think, will be, um, yeah, it's critical. Oh, look, Paula, that was great. Thank you very much for your time today. And, and well, I've, no, I've no doubt your business will do very well. Thank you. You're, you're a sort of fly, so thank you very much today. Okay, thanks a lot, Chris.